Hello there, and it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk, and here is my newly acquired BBC Master 1 to 8. Thought I'd just give you a quick show over it. I'll get to that in a minute. And as we can see, this is what I picked up the other day for the princely price of nothing. Friend of mine's father's had it stuck in the loft for 20 years. He found out that I was interested in this type of stuff and said, Would I like to have it? So the other day I went and picked it up. I haven't I haven't powered it up straight away because it had sat in a loft for 20 years and I know that these power supplies are not that reliable after a long term storage. So I whipped the power supply out of it, hooked it up on my bench, hooked the dummy load up to it and left it running for about 12 hours just monitoring the output and it seemed absolutely fine to be honest. Um, it didn't get particularly warm and it just worked. There was not much ripple on the output. It seemed as good as um, it would have been back in the day. I did whip it open quickly and just check a few of the caps. Um, all the electrolytics seem fine. The ESRs, I wouldn't say it's bang on, but it's certainly none of them are dead. Um, the little Weimer... X2 capacitors on the mains input side, however, um, they are showing a bit of cracking on them. Now, I've had these things go off in the past in various bits of equipment. Uh, don't usually do much damage to the power supply, to be totally honest, because it's on the mains input side. The most thing it really usually does is emit a lot of smoke and possibly blow the mains fuse. And if you're stupid enough to have a 13 amp fuse in the plug, which you should never have with one of these, it should be a 3 amp fuse. Uh, you run the chance of um, popping your mains breaker or uh, blowing your fuse wire if your house is that old. Mine is. <laughs> I really got to get round to sorting that, but uh, it's one of them things that one day. Anyhow, so I am reasonably happy with the power supply at the moment. I said I will change them um, X2 caps with some uh, new ones as soon as I can be bothered because I don't particularly want this thing emitting smoke all over my office. Uh, apart from that, I have powered it up now, and when I first powered it, oh, I'll just go back to something. When I first opened the case on it, I found this horror. Yes, that's a Duracell backup battery. And it is horrible and leaky and nasty, and I don't really want to touch it. And it is even... I don't know how, because that was stuck down this slot there on the side next to the power supply. And it's connected to the board by that long cable there. And it's actually started to make the board turn green. I'm sorry, I've not got a lot of light in here. There's really, really bad light in my office. I should get something better. You can see that really nasty, horrible green on there. That's on the uh, battery connector. So I'm going to have to get a bit of mild uh, vinegar solution. And just brush that down and clean that off and neutralise any alkali which is going to damage the board. I don't think it's done too much damage up to now but I have a feeling I've just caught that in time. Anyway so I've whipped that out for now and I will come up with a solution for that um, as soon as I can be bothered really. I Once I'd removed that I've powered the thing up. Oh another thing. My uh, Master Compact... Um, I used the RGB output on it through a um, little Master Compact A car and um, RGB to, um, it was a UHF adapter but I've modded it to give colour composite output because the Master Compact, um, unlike the Master 128 and the earlier BBCs, there's no easy way of getting colour composite video out of it or indeed um, S video out of one. This apparently you can which is good because that external box I was using was a bit of a pain. It wasn't a best of colour composite signals. It had a bit of noise on it. It was a bit of a budge up from me by basically just disconnecting the modulator inside it and uh, budging on the transistor to boost the output slightly. Anyway, I digress. This has got some better output, but it does have the old BNC style connector. Now, I thought I had some old BNC to BNC leads and a BNC to phono adapter so I could... Uh, connect the phone up to my uh, little SCART adapter there so it can connect to my monitor. Unfortunately I couldn't find one so five minutes with the soldering and a little bit of screened cable. 
little photo connector. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. I bought them when a place was going bankrupt and about, about 200 of them for 10 quid. So I'm never ever short of photo connectors. Provided I need a black because I've only got them in black unfortunately. But hey, never mind. So that connects to my little uh, sky breakout box there. The other end, I salvaged a load of these lovely gold plated connectors from a former colleague when we were scrapping some old gear. I went round and chopped all the connectors off. You have to desolder bits of wire from inside them, but they're uh, great and they were free. So that connects to the back of the master there. I powered it up and I got a bit of garble on the screen, which is unusual for these because it had no CMOS battery and it had lost all its settings. So a quick hold down R, switch it off, switch it back on to do a CMOS reset, and it comes up MOS. But it comes up with a missing operating system. Now it has a basic ROM in it. In fact the basic ROM that was in it is this one here. That. But when I typed star ROMs on the beep. It didn't come up. It said there was no basic in there. So I thought just for a check. I dug out my uh, probably one of the cheapest EEPROM uh, readers writers you can get I think I paid about 40 quid for this on eBay but it's absolutely brilliant for the money you can still find these on eBay I bought this uh, a few years back but they're still available on eBay so they're about 40 quid if you look around very very nice little unit and I took my uh, basic EEPROM I had to scrape a bit of the stuff off so I could actually uh, read the type number on it so this one is a AMD, I believe. Um, yes, it's an AM27128. Uh, and I pop that in my... Let's just make sure we've got that in there correctly. I put that in my EEPROM reader. Pull down the handle. And here's the... Is this going to focus? I've never tried doing this with an LCD monitor. Oh yeah, there we go. Anyway, there's the simple basic software for this um, EEPROM programmer. And as you can see here, we have an AM27128IC. And if we try and read this IC, and let's try reading this IC there. Read. Oh dear. Error. And no matter what I try, that I see is duff. It will not read, it will not do anything. I'll probably try and erase it and um, see whether I can erase it and read it then. And then I might be able to reuse it. But I have a feeling that that EEPROM is knackered. So what I did is I popped on the web. And I very handily found where I could download... BBC Basic version 4 for the BBC Master 128, the ROM image. I downloaded that and using the same bit of software. I'm not going to show how we use this because if you uh, want to get into it, buy one and uh, find out yourself. There's plenty of, tu of tutorials on, eBay on, uh, eBay, on YouTube on how to use this software. But anyway, using that and the ROM image I downloaded, I burnt a new basic ROM which is there. That underneath you can see is the Super MMC ROM for the card reader, which I have just uh, installed there just to see if it's working on this, and it is. So here we go, we'll have a quick switch on, and I'll show you this machine working. There we go, it's on, and if we go up to my uh, monitor. Yes, that is a £5 sticker on that monitor. I bought this about five years ago from a car boot sale for a fiver. It's actually a TV with um, VGA out. It's only analog TV, but it's also got SCART and S-Video on it. So it's incredibly useful in here. I can plug all my old vintage systems into it, and uh, most of them work. The only problem I've ever had with it is it does, even with resistors in the cable, I've tried many configurations of different cable, I cannot get it to work with RGB off a of BBC. I've had it working with my Amstrad CPC, I've had it working with my Tatung Einstein, but I've never been able to get it to sync up properly with a B the TTL output of a BBC. So that's why with this 128 I may do an S-Video mod on it and uh, then I can display it natively straight S-Video into the back of the monitor which would be nice. 
It also leaves the uh, composite and the ITTL outputs for other purposes. Perhaps we want to do any uh, video capture for anything in the future. Anyway, as we see, we are up and we have up there Akine MOS, Akine DFS. Now, the problem is because there's no backup battery, it is not finding the basic on boot up because it can't remember the settings but you can get it into basic by simply typing by simply holding control D and then I cannot do this really with one hand but pressing break and then if we look we have a car focus a car and DFS basic and we have BBC basic on it now and I can show you also which ROMs are now installed if I type star oops delete okay. shift star roms press enter there we go that shows you what we have in here and the one we are interested in is dfs 5a because that is the super mmc rom i believe Let me just have a quick check here and I believe I can type, I'm still learning all this with this uh, MMC software, but just to show that it's all working, I'm just looking at some, a um, few little bits here, just let's see, let's try this, we can type, star, help, space, D U T I L S enter and there we go there's the disk utils and i believe this is what is comes up from the um from the what's it called the um, mmc um rom okay so so far so good i'm going to end it here now because you're probably getting bored of all my waffling and hopefully next time I'm showing this, I'll actually be able to be reading the uh, MMC card on it. Oh, another couple of little things. It has, does have a few issues. Like I so said, this thing's sat 20 years in someone's attic. Uh, the keyboard is a little bit manky. F is... Uh, actually, F has now started coming back to life. When I first started playing with it, I could hardly get F to work at all. I'm, uh, oh, that's um, far so much better. Oh, that's rather good. Let's uh, just try that again. Yes, I now have um, some type of working guess. The one thing it does have a problem with is it's missing its delete key, unfortunately. And it's not just missing the key cap. The little top of the switch, as you can see, has been snapped off. But all is not lost because I was having a rummage through my spares pile and I found that. That. Come on, focus. That's there. I don't know how rare these must be now, but that is an original replacement key switch for a BBC. So that will replace that broken off one there and then all i need to do is find a keycap to fit it i don't think even in all my junk i've got a delete but i'm sure i've got a key which i can at least stick on there for now until i find the right one like i said i weren't going to waffle and i've waffled far too long now so uh i hope you enjoyed that quick look over my new bbc master 128 and thanks for watching